Hey YouTube, this is Southern Prepper One. It's been a long time since I've done a video. Uh, been very busy. But I want to show you something. If you're thinking about buying land um, and it has a creek or river on it, um, you're going to have to understand a few things about it. And if you're a worry wart or things get you very uneasy and you get very nervous, you might not want to own property with a creek or a river on it. Now if it's a very small one it might be different because your land is going to be changing where it's located at the creek or the river. As you can see, this is my right of way to get across this river and it's most people call it a creek but it's considered a river. So I've been throwing rocks in here and I've thrown a lot more that you can't even see uh, down there to stabilize that bank. Um, because when it rains, not every time, it's done it two or three times since I've owned the property for like three years. So maybe once a year it floods. It goes up quickly and it comes down just as quick. But if you can see this rope across there and you see that knot, the water usually gets up to there. So it's going into the farmer's field. So I've lost a lot of bank there, which is really not my property. Uh, it's the farmer's property that owns it. Uh, but he's definitely letting me stabilize the bank because that's where I'm going to put a, a walking suspension bridge. And you can see that one wire going across. Um, but it'll be a three foot suspension bridge. So if you own property, how do you maintain the banks? Now you might just go with the philosophies that you don't care, that the river will do whatever it wants. Um, but there'll be points where you will want to stabilize the bank. And there's things you can do. One is the rock. Don't use concrete, don't use anything man-made until you check your regulations. Because you might do something, I've seen cool ways you can do with tires, uh, but I don't think uh, a lot of local authorities will like that uh, to stabilize your bank. So I'm using native rock, I'm getting it free, you can't see, but right up there there's a huge pile I have to add in. Um, but all of this, other than that big pile there and that dirt pile, I brought in with my little four-cylinder Toyota pickup truck. Um, lots of loads you just get at it and you get it done you know when the farmer saw my son throwing rocks in there he sort of snickered well he did snicker like he was like oh what are you You're never gonna get this done and then he looked over the bank and said hmm so you know you eat an elephant one bite at a time and that's what I'm doing here so goal now I'm I have access well I did have access to free rock stabilize that bank so I can get my three-foot suspension walking bridge across the river this river has changed. Um, I didn't own it, but if you look right up here, the river used to be right there. It went across here. Um, if the vegetation wasn't there, you would see the old bank where the river was. The river will move. So if you're a worry wart, you know what? River property is probably not for you. I enjoy river property and I probably would enjoy it more than lake or pond because it's always changing. You never know when you come down here. Uh, I'd love, two days ago, um, my wife and me and my son's family and two little grandbabies, well, they're not little anymore, they're a year and a half and three and a half, we, we walked the creek. It was fun. We had fun in this creek. Um, but I'm going to show you some things that's happened. This creek has changed in three years since I've owned it. It, right now it's really wide here, which is sort of nice. I did lose a bunch of property. I bet you I lost seven or eight feet coming out of that bank right there. So what, do I'm, what am I going to do? You can see the trees that have come in. They were on that bank. They've fallen in. So if you're looking at property to buy, look at the bank. You might have a great area that you're not going to have to put a lot of money in, but if you really wanted to do it right and you own some river or creek frontage, you could spend thousands, tens and tens of thousands of dollars um, repairing the banks, stabilizing the banks. Now, there's a lot of things you can do yourself that doesn't cost a lot of money, but for me to properly stabilize this bank, that wasn't like that the last storm. Um, it was starting to get like that, but it's carved off all of that real estate and there's all the vegetation. Part of the problem was, see these low branches, the trees, the bushes, uh, where that it can get hit by the water, I think it really deteriorates the bank. It starts pulling on it and um, it's all that force against that vegetation. So I think you need to keep anything that's leaning over cut off. Don't dig up the roots. 
that is what you want. You want all that vegetation up there. You don't want it leaning over where the floodwaters grab it. Uh, you probably want about 15 feet back of vegetation. You want trees, you want bushes, you want grasses, you want different types of plants because that root structure is what stabilizes that bank. A lot of people, and I was going to do that, I am totally guilty because I did a little bit right there. You can see how it's a little bit cleared out right there. Um, I've taken a bunch of the bushes, I should not have done that. Uh, but I've learned, I've done a lot of research. Those bushes are good, that's what you want. You want that root structure pulling and holding your bank together. So what can I do to fix this? Definitely I could rock it. Um, very costly, totally out of, out of my realm of doing it. There's another thing you could do. Um, you could cut that bank down and make it about a 33 degrees. Uh, some people do 45, but they say 33 is probably optimal if you want to plant vegetation on it. So basically three to one. So let's just hypothetically, there's a lot of extra dirt piled up there on the bank. Um, but let's just say that's five feet. So basically a three to one ratio. I want to go back 15 feet and then slope that bank. To do that, you need an excavator. You need some equipment. Uh, um, right now I don't have an excavator, so that won't be done. I will just accept any losses in that bank. Because, you know, you accept the loss here, but down the stream or down the river, guess what? I gain a little bit. It's just how the thing works. And I like this because this is an awesome area to make a swimming hole in it. We had a little swimming hole up here, and I'll show it. It disappeared in the sense of our bank. But if you can see here how he has the bank sloped, um, that's what you want. Now, if you really are doing it right, you're going to put vegetation. You can also use this type of matting material that's going to hold that soil. And if you do angle your banks back, you need to put that matting material down because you might uh, get a storm that does so much damage because there's no vegetation there. So you can put this matting material and anchor it down. There's still a lot of dirt inside there. So it's what it's doing is it's pushing the, the creek a little bit over. Um, I don't like that because we have snakes in South Carolina and I don't want to be swimming in here with that. So I will clear all that out and it's going to make an awesome little swimming hole in here. Uh, both my grandbabies love it. Love the, getting in the water and playing in the sand. So. I am going to do nothing with that bank until I get an excavator over there, and that's going to be years from now. So I'll accept the losses, um, but I am going to leave about a 15-foot strip of vegetation all the way down here. And, I, and you do need the trees, you need the bushes, you need a diverse uh, group of plants and trees. There are trees and plants that will hold better, and you can check the internet. So if you've got to stabilize your bank, there's some that are so much better. Uh, with the root system you can see that big tree I'm hoping it doesn't go um, that bank is washed out good right there if it does look like it's gonna go I will cut that tree and harvest it for lumber I don't want it to fall in the creek plus it makes it a lot harder this used to be my swimming hole and it's still a swimming hole but I used to have a sandy beach right there and as you can see that bank is gone it's crazy uh, what water can do. So you can't cry, you can't worry, uh, accept it. M Mother Nature and water will beat you every time. You can see these trees right here. Those trees used to be on that bank up there and it got eroded and they've come in. So they eventually have to be cut down. Um, if you buy property with a stream or a creek on it, remember if it's a navigable waterway, People can come down there. I don't know the law if they can come down here and cut trees or if they have to portage around it. Um, but the law is pretty clear. If they can't get through a navigable waterway, they are allowed to get onto the bank and the shortest distance possible go around the obstacle. They can't stop. They can't have a picnic lunch. Um, they have to use the shortest means possible, walk on your property, and get around the obstacle. So if you don't want people walking on your property, keep your stream, creek, if it's navigable, open. Cut those logs so it gives them no reason to. I have never seen anyone other than my family or friends on this creek. There's some trees down here and there, and, and people just don't come down here. Um, primary because 
when I bought the property, we were sort of in a drought and the water was down. You could still take a, a kayak through it, but it's a pain when you have to run into trees. Um, I have about a third of a mile here. I am going to clean it up on both sides. Uh, and reason is, I don't want the farmer to lose property on his side. And, and you can see, see all the, all the debris that's pushed into there? When that water hits there, it makes a tremendous stress on the bank. So anything that's going to hit, be hit by the water, I'm going to take out. I'll start on my side first. You can see that's a mess. This is time consuming. So remember that if you're buying a piece of property, you could just have the attitude of what happens, happens, and I'll enjoy the river or creek. But if you're a worry wart um, and you want everything perfect and you have OS o OCD, you might be in trouble because there's a lot of work. But this is so beautiful putting a kayak in here and going down. Uh, it's so peaceful, it's quiet. Also, all this vegetation, <coughs> excuse me, along the bank <coughs> does a few other things. It definitely shades the creek. It provides shade for uh, fish. The habitat that's in here, when I come in here sometimes there's ducks, which is very unusual um, that I, I see one, but occasionally I will see a couple ducks on the creek, uh, great blue herons. It provides a, a nice environment <coughs> for wildlife. If you cut all this down and just had green grass, um, you're not going to have that animals you're not going to have all that uh, wildlife in here and, and a lot of it is just frogs salamanders toads stuff like that <coughs> I'm going to show you a, a few other things what I've been doing <laughs> I've got the mower back over here and I've opened things up uh, I think this is chi Chinese privet. It's a privet. I think it's Chinese. It's not native. It's terrible. It's a, a scourge. Um, so if you're looking at proper and you have this, you'll want to take it out. If not, it will literally take over everything. So that's going to be an increased cost. If you buy a big piece and you need heavy equipment, um, you can take it out with a small tractor. Or as you know, I've taken all this out by hand. Uh, with a standard lawnmower and a chainsaw. But we've had good news. Uh, a few days ago, our neighbor uh, was very glad to let us bring our tractor and implements onto our property. Uh, in exchange, I'm going to do some bush hogging for him. So it's a definitely win, win for him. He doesn't have a bush hog and he desperately needs some stuff bush hogged. And it's a definite win for us. In a few hours, we were able to clear something that would have taken us days and days and days. Literally, um, we were able to pop up some small stumps that if we had to dig, I mean, I wouldn't dig. I would have just cut them off. But as you can see, we're getting that cleared up. This flood, so if you buy creek or river property, be prepared for that. You can't put anything down here. This is considered a floodplain. But the positive side is soil is so rich in here also remember though if it floods what's upstream do you have industry you have manufacturing do you have sites that could be polluting you downstream uh, luckily I live so far in the country and this is a very small river and the start of its right up the road that I don't have that problem but think of that you think oh I'm gonna do a buy a piece of property I have some great fertile bottom land I'm gonna plant an organic garden it might not turn organic too long because this will be under about two feet of water where I'm standing here. Uh, and it's done it, I think, three times in the three years I've owned it. Now, granted, in about 10, 12 hours, it's gone. And that's only if you get a lot of rain in a very, very short period of time. So you might say, I'm going to put a garden in there. It could flood. So you really can't put anything in here of value. And let's talk about fences. Say you want to put some animals in here, which would be great. You know when it's going to flood. You can look at the weather and you say, you know what, it's going to flood. So you could move your animals. And animals aren't dumb. They're going to migrate to the higher ports of your property. But the fencing, say you, along there, I put some nice field fencing. Um, that would be a bad thing because the river brings in a lot of debris. Not a lot, but enough 
that would get caught on that fence and the amount of pressure after um, a bunch of stuff piled up against the fence would definitely move the fence in, uh, inwards. It'd bend it. <coughs> so you might have to readjust. You might have to go with three strands of electric fence over there to keep animals in. So a lot of things to think about if you're thinking about buying property, but that's just a few. Thanks for watching.